Hello and welcome to EEI 101, where we'll be giving you a short introduction to the EEI curriculum. I'm Christy Porter and I'm a Senior Environmental Education Specialist here in Calvert Cycles Office of Education and the Environment. I'm Wendy Weller. I teach in the Elk Grove Unified School District. I currently teach kindergarten uh, and I've worked with the EEI curriculum since I think about 2007 in various capacities including field testing and I've been a teacher ambassador uh, since 2010. Yeah, so Wendy's when, been with us since the beginning. So today uh, we have a few things we want to go over. We're going to give you an overview of the EEI curriculum. We'll be talking about why you might want to bring EEI into your classroom. Wendy will be walking you through um, the teacher and student materials. And finally, I'll be talking about how you can uh, get the EEI curriculum. So what is the EEI curriculum? Um, it's kindergarten through 12th grade. And um, it teaches science and history, social science through an environmental lens. So some of the features, it was approved by the State Board of Education in 2010. And uh, Wendy, you were actually there at that meeting when it was approved, weren't you? I was. I was one of the teachers who spoke to the State Board of Education, which is something I never thought I'd do in my life. But it was a great day. Yep, and uh, they approved it. And um, the curriculum was inspired by a vision of environmental literacy for all kindergarten through 12th grade students. So what is environmental literacy? It's really about how we all depend upon and influence the environment. We all have a relationship with the environment, whether it's the water we drink, the air we breathe, the lumber um, from which our houses are built. Um, so no matter where we live, um, whether in the city or in the country, we have a relationship with the environment. And the whole goal of EEI is to encourage students to look deeper and more pervasively at the ways in which our human systems interact with natural systems in significant ways. And what we really want students to be able to do is um, to make informed decisions. So we want them to be informed decision makers um, by the time they finish their school career. So um, the EEI curriculum incorporates these five different environmental principles into its lessons. And these principles are really about how we depend upon and influence the environment. So, um, so principle one, how humans depend on natural systems. Principle two, we influence those systems. Um, principle three, about some of the cycles that humans um, can benefit from and can alter. Principle four, about there being no um, impermeable boundaries. Um, and then five, about some of the um, decision-making processes um, that can go into these environmental decisions. Um, and with the EEI curriculum, I would say you see Principle 5 more at some of the middle school and high school units, but Wendy, you're, you're teaching kindergarten now, and you even see Principle 5 showing up there. There are definitely ways in which uh, you see it just pop up every now and then, and kindergartners understand at a kindergarten level about even turning the, the water off or the light switch or whether they put aluminum can into the recycling container or into the garbage. Absolutely. So we start making those, those decisions at a young age and then by the time someone graduates from high school, um, how they vote or the kind of car that they might buy. And again, it's really about making informed decisions. It is, and it's really exciting to think of a more environmentally literate citizenry, that the way we interact with our government and the way we interact with our environment both have something to do with the other. And as we're moving towards some of the newer adopted textbooks, we want teachers to also think about how they can um, think about these environmental principles with their new instructional materials as well. It doesn't just need to be EEI curriculum. So um, think about that um, with all of your teaching materials. 
So uh, we wanted to talk with you a little bit about why you might want to bring EEI into your classroom. And um, Wendy, I know that um, you've been using the EEI curriculum at quite a few different grade levels. How, how many, what grades have you taught with EEI? I've taught kindergarten, uh, second, third, and fourth grade, uh, including five years in a special education setting where I used EEI to great effect as well. Okay, well, let's talk about some of the reasons that you um, like EEI. I think what I find at every grade level that I've taught, EEI is, for one thing, it's easy to use. As a teacher, it's not going to take me hours to find all these pieces to curriculum. Um, it has great background for me. Um, I don't particularly have a strong science background academically in my undergraduate. Um, and yet, the EEI curriculum gives me a deep enough and broad enough um, background so that I feel confident to be able to address the issues with students. Um, I think that another thing that's great is that my students at every grade level that I've used have been engaged with it and motivated by it. Well, let's move to the next slide. There it is. It is indeed modern, relevant, and engaging. Uh, that's no lie. And I, I look at that reader there and I think about the times I've used that in classrooms, and one time in particular, seeing a student just come alive, a student that I hadn't known could think that deeply about topics, but that little reader that's there on the screen gave him a way to understand and to participate in a new way. And I think that was uh, a third grade reader. Yes, that's a, from a third grade unit. Well, I think we're all pretty aware of Common Core standards at this point, um, and it's important that it's really easy to see the ways in which EEI supports Common Core standards. E even though it was actually created before Common Core came along. It was. It was. It's not a stretch to use EEI resources to support Common Core, however. Um, I find that there's really high quality informational text that's really useful because it's at appropriate grade levels and yet it's deep enough and challenging enough without um, students being completely confused by it. Um, it's very accessible to students is what I found. Um, the information that it gives them and just the whole way EEI goes about trying to provide more experiential ways of thinking about issues and concepts in environmental literacy has given the students ways to really apply this to their lives and really to the way they think. And um, even though EEI was actually written for the 1998 science standards before NGSS came along, but we hear that um, a lot of teachers are finding it useful for their transition to NGSS. So we don't want to mislead anyone that if they're using EEI that they're teaching NGSS, but we do have correlation guides on the EEI website, we'll sh which will show some of the connections for NGSS. So again, it can be used as a good transitional tool, and um, we also talk about harvesting EEI resources yeah. for teachers who want to create their own NGSS lessons using some of those readings that you talked about, visual aids, maps, um, and teachers can use this for applying some of those uh, science and engineering practices. Um, cross-cutting concepts like cause and effect in particular. So um, check out our, our website again to, to see those correlation guides. There are some great pieces available for teachers in this curriculum and you see a lot of them on the screen in front of you right now. Um, the teacher's edition, as I mentioned before, is well organized, very easy to use, uh, very easy to see the step-by-step -step process of the lessons if you're choosing to teach an entire lesson as written. Um, there, there are some great student texts, uh, whether it's the big book that we see in uh, kindergarten and first grade, uh, or some of the student editions that have uh, more extensive uh, text for students. 
Uh, you can use the student pieces as consumable pieces um, so that they're able to actually do some of the common core um, practices like um, annotating and highlighting text. Uh, however, it's really great too because there are digital options so that you don't even need things in print to do the totality of, of the resources in the EI curriculum. Uh, you can see there are things like word wall cards. Every word wall card and every student dictionary has uh, pictures with each word. That's, an, that's especially a great support for your English language learners uh, to help them understand. Uh, and in the lower grades, I think just about every student is an English language learner in some mm -hmm. fundamental ways. So I found them to be very useful. Um, probably one of my favorite pieces is the, the map uh, component. These maps are um, National Geographic maps uh, who partnered with um, the writers of the curriculum. So they're really amazing maps with a lot of, of course, peerless uh, graphic qualities as well as uh, just a lot of different ways for uh, students to access information. So you will love the maps. They, they do come with the curriculum when you order it. And they're, they're very large wall maps. Uh, as I mentioned before, the teacher's edition is very, uh, very easy to access and use. You can see here there are background pieces and also the at a glance so that you can see the direction that the unit takes. There are also relevant California connections. These are really powerful because students recognize the state and the place where they live when they read them. Uh, which makes it all the more relevant and engaging for students to encounter. Then there are also extensions. These extensions can, can connect to things like the civics and citizenship standards in the history and social science standards. Uh, they're just places to go farther. We all know what assessments are. The great thing about EEI is we have a traditional assessment, which looks exactly as you would expect it to, and then an alternative assessment that often provides a more project-based approach to assessment. So thank you, Wendy. So um, I'm sure that teachers are wondering, OK, so how do I get the EEI curriculum? As Wendy mentioned, um, some teachers uh, like to use it digitally. All of the EEI units, 85 of them, are available for download on the EEI website. You can also check out our website for current information about the availability of uh, the curriculum in hard copy. So uh, we encourage you to connect with us on social media, um, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we also have a, a teachers group on, on Facebook, and we encourage you to join that. So thank you for joining us for our introduction to EEI, EEI 101. Check out our website, and if you'd like to contact us, you can uh, contact us at our email address, eei at calrecycle.ca.gov. We hope you enjoy using the EEI curriculum. Thank you.